Hey guys, welcome back. Last week I did an Instagram reel about how that adorable little primitive protective machine in your head, that little narrator, that little mind loves to make meaning. It loves to connect dots and say why something happens or why you feel a certain way, why you had a certain intrusive thought. The mind loves to say because and about. You're feeling insecure because of an email you got from your boss, because of a conversation you had with your child, because of a bank balance, a physical symptom, a diagnosis. You're feeling anxious because of an upcoming doctor's appointment, an upcoming parent-teacher conference. You're feeling worried about whatever it is your mind then comes right on the heels of the feeling and fills in the blank. Your mind loves shiny objects. I think of those abouts and becauses, whether it's a relationship, a bank balance, a physical issue, a sensation, an intrusive thought, whatever your thing is, the mind is like the, magi the magician's um, sleight of hand. You know how the magician will do something shiny and sparkly over here so that you don't actually look over here where the real thing's happening. The mind loves whatever's obvious and the mind will use whatever's most obvious in your life, whether it's a habit, a relationship issue, money, your health, the list is endless. The mind will use whatever is most obvious in your life and say, that's the cause. That's the reason you're feeling insecure, anxious, worried, tight, upset. It's very compelling. But here's the thing about being mesmerized by the thing. The mind is so, it's so sneaky. It's so tenacious that as soon as it's got you hooked into the about, I'm anxious about the doctor's appointment. Let's just, let's just pick one. I'm anxious about the upcoming doctor's appointment. And then as soon as it's got you on the hook for the magician's sleight of hand, the shiny object, well, now it's, <laughs> it's one. It's got you on the hook for letting it solve your problems, for letting it give you ideas on how to settle, how to not be anxious, how to feel better. And inherently, there isn't anything wrong with wanting to feel better. Of course, we all would rather not feel anxious or worried or angry or tight or insecure. But I want you to just start playing with this idea that once that ego mind, once that little machine has you on the hook for this is the thing to solve so that you don't have this feeling, you're kind of hooked in to a lie. You're hooked into a shiny object, a mesmerizing, captivating sleight of hand of the magician because the mind does not want you to investigate what the feeling is. Like, what is anxiety? What is insecurity, confusion, tightness? What is worry? The mind, if it can keep you on the, on the surface, on the most superficial level, right up here in the very thin thread of human experience, and by the way, human experience, you've probably figured out by now, is designed to do this. Up and down, loop to loop, like a, a roller coaster. That's just what human experience does. But the mind, once it locks you in, it loves to have you locked in to this up and down, loop to loop, kind of fun house world of human experience because it knows you can never find true lasting peace there. You can't find your freedom and your peace and your well being <laughs> in the midst of the roller coaster. So the mind, if it can convince you to stay with the shiny object, then it can say, hey, peace is right around the corner. Freedom, happiness, your ability to relax and let go is right around the corner. Stick with me, stick with me, stick with the shiny object because I'll give you peace. It's not too far away. 
It's after this doctor's appointment is over, after you get the test results, after you start the medication, after your husband does the thing your mind has convinced you is the thing making you anxious, worried, upset, or angry, after your bank account has exactly the, the number it has set for you. Do you see how, how quick it is? How it loves to grab anything it can grab that's shiny, that's obvious, that we've been conditioned and programmed in our culture to believe is the thing to attain. Perfect health, the perfect bank balance, a perfect relationship, happiness, whatever the thing is, if the mind can keep you on the hook for the because, for the about, well, then it's got you on the hook for your peace and your freedom and your joy. And those things cannot come at the end of whatever the mind says is the finish line. Because if you've lived 30, 40, or 50 years or more, <laughs> you've probably seen that the mind's finish line always gets kicked down the road a little bit. I'll let you relax, or it'll say, it uses first person. I'll relax as soon as I make it through exams. I'll relax as soon as my last kid leaves the house. I'll relax when I retire. I'll relax when my physical symptoms go away. That's a big one. I'll relax when I get my health back under control. Whatever your shiny object is, and yes, I include the body in the shiny objects. Your, your physical health is part of a shiny object. Even intrusive thoughts, even things like, I'm happy, I'm sad, I'm up, I'm down. That's all part of the, the beautiful sleight of hand of the magician of your ego mind. Whatever the thing is, it says you're anxious, insecure, worried, nervous, about is a lie. It's a, it's a made up story that your mind has made up to keep you on the hook, to keep you on the hook, to keep going back to it. So it keeps its job of telling you almost, you're almost there. You're almost to freedom. You're almost to peace. Hold on, hold on. It's almost there. And then it keeps kicking that can down the line, moving the finish line further and further away. And because it's such a tenacious, adorable little mind, it'll all also give you like little mini reliefs. It'll give you that brief, like you make it through the doctor's appointment you were anxious about and you're like, oh, I did it. And the mind's like, yes, see, that was the thing. And now you can relax. And again, if you've lived 30, 40, 50 or more years, you know that doesn't last. Because as soon as you relax for a little while, the mind immediately starts scanning. Oh gosh, um, now it's this. Now it's the medication. Now it's the bank balance. Now it's this thing. The mind will never just let you relax. That's not its design. And there's nothing wrong with that. We're not trying to change the mind here. The mind is perfectly designed, even though it's quite primitive. It's perfectly designed to not let you relax. But there is peace and freedom and relaxation right now, right here. Not at the end of this shiny object, not at the imaginary finish line your ego mind is creating for you. So in the Instagram little reel I talked to, talked through last week, um, I suggested just play with this. And this isn't to dismiss things in your life. This isn't to say, forget about your diagnosis, forget about your job, forget about your husband. None of that. It's to say, start getting curious about what is the thing your mind is trying to keep you from investigating. What is the deeper, more expansive, realer, <laughs> truer thing here, here, that this shiny object, this magician's sleight of hand is keeping you so focused on so that you don't 
investigate here so that you don't look to what is true, real, sustainable, timeless, right here, right now, because that's where freedom is. That's where true imperturbable peace is. That's where causeless joy is. You have peace right now. There is peace right now, freedom right now, relaxation right now. When we start to sort of tease apart us, that original voice, that true us, from all the noise over here, from this narrator, from this ego mind that loves to spin and connect dots and say because and about and set finish lines for when we can be at peace. See if you can play around just for fun with dropping the about or the because. I'm anxious about the doctor's appointment. I'm worried because of my daughter's behavior. I'm angry because of my husband's comment. Again, we're not dismissing the things in life, but I want you to start seeing if you can tease out the raw emotion of fear, insecurity, anger, just the raw, pure emotion, the sensation of it, without the story. And then when you have that sensation of let's say insecurity, which by the way, is just built into the human costume. It's built into the design. It's perfect that it's built into the design. It keeps us from identifying so much as this primary identity of a story, an image. But just stay with the raw emotion, the raw sensation of insecurity or fear or terror even without the story. Because when you can just have the raw sensation or emotion, you then have the ability to do a little investigating. And I don't mean digging around and going into your past and finding all the la you know, your, the traumas and the unmet needs and the unmet expectations. Some of those may come to the surface and that's great. But I'm not talking about digging. I'm talking about being open to seeing something brand new, brand new about where freedom comes from, about where peace resides now. Because believe it or not, all these shiny objects, all these things I call human experience can walk hand in hand with relaxation and peace and freedom now, right now. All human experience, circumstances, and by circumstances or human experience, I include physical body, physical health, intrusive thoughts. All of those are normal, universal, common human experiences. And they're not yours. They do not belong to you and they do not say anything about you. They're just part of this human collective. They're moving through this space of you. So when you're not so mesmerized and captivated by the shiny object, whatever that is, physical health, your husband, your habit, whatever this is, when you're not so mesmerized here, you get to start investigating here. Not the noise, not the voice of the head, not the voice of the narrator, but here. Your true voice, your original voice, the still small voice the one that guides you, the one that points you to the peace that's here now, the one that points you to your true well-being. This is where it begins. Teasing out the shiny object with who you are. And the response, I say this because when I first started investigating this for myself, <laughs> this is so common, my little ego mind jumped in and wanted to make a game of it because the ego mind is tenacious and it's sneaky. So adorable, it cannot help it. But my mind jumped in and wanted to make a game of it. And so it said, okay, so the goal now is to just like be okay with the shiny object. So like mine back in the day was my physical symptoms that were raging. 
So when I started playing with just the raw terror or the raw fear, I was like, well, so the goal is to not care about the shiny object, not look at it. And then of course, my mind told me ways to distract, numb, get away from it. That's not what we're talking about here at all. We're talking about seeing that the response, meaning the hatred of it, so physical symptoms, rage, they ramp up. There's a hatred, a fear, a resistance, a, I can't stand this, I can't cope, it's too much. The response is included in the whole package. It's not the circumstance and the response. It's one thing arising together. Life arising like a wave out of an ocean life arising together as a physical symptoms and a hatred of it. It's the same. One human experience, one wave rising out of the ocean. We're not trying to have a different response. I'm not saying at all, try to not hate the physical symptom, no. Or try to not resist, try to not feel guilty, shame, no. It's one thing, it's two sides of the same coin ramp up in physical sensations and hatred, resistance, fear. One wave coming out of the ocean, one human experience. I'm not suggesting that we try to separate those out. We want to see that as one thing, one wave coming out of the ocean, one human experience arising out of life. And simply come back here and notice the package the arising, oh, there's a, a ramp up in physical symptoms and inherent in that is a hatred of physical symptoms, a fear, a resistance, okay. None of that is personal, it's here, it's arising and it's in service of me, me. Not my image, not my story, not circumstances, me, the real me. I used to say, I had this little, um, I don't know if you want to call it a mantra, a saying, a reminder, I don't know what it was, but it would always just come to me. As I started seeing this idea of the package, the wave rising, the circumstance, the experience arising of physical symptoms and hatred, fear. And I would come back here and say, may this experience be a seed to my awakening and to the awakening of all who are suffering with this same rise of human experience. The awakening is just a coming back to you before the story, before all the conditioning and programming, you, who you are, which is peace right now, which is witnessing presence, noticing right now. You can have whatever human experience is arising and walk hand in hand with peace, with relaxation, with a sense of absolute okayness. It's possible. Start with that first baby step, teeny little baby step number one, which is whatever's arising and the response to it. Remember that's one package, one wave right arising from the ocean the thing, the fight with the husband and the hatred resistance, all one thing. And you're here, back up. The about, I'm anxious about, I'm fearful of, I'm worried because. Everything after the because and the about, let that shiny object kind of go here for a minute. You come just to the raw insecurity, fear, whatever it is, Stay there, investigate there. That's where the freedom is. Not freedom from anxiety, not freedom from fear or freedom from human experience. You are the freedom that holds all human experience. It's pretty amazing. Let me know if you have any questions.